assalamu alaikum dear students in this video of applied linear algebra i will discuss about eigen values and characteristic equations uh, before going to uh, discuss the eigen values let me recall a concept that is linear transformation if we have a square matrix a and if we have a vector x and if we multiply this matrix with uh, that vector ax then we would have a new vector that is x prime and this process is called transforming a vector x into x prime and a is called uh, the square matrix representing a linear transformation suppose if we have a rectangle like this and if uh, we want to stretch it out from these two corners then the new shape of this rectangle would be something like this uh, it, it would be a stretched uh, shape uh, of this rectangle so if we consider this side uh, if there is a vector which is parallel to this side in new diagram or in new figure the direction of this particular vector has been changed and if we take this vector which is parallel to the original rectangle uh, then uh, the direction of this vector has also been changed so there are so many vectors uh, lying parallel to these sides which have changed their sides but there are vectors which uh, which remain invariant under this stretch and uh, suppose if i take a vector x on this diagonal then it would still remain on this diagonal even after the stretch however uh, the the magnitude of this vector will change i mean the length of this vector would change due to this stretch so all those vectors which do not change their direction under a certain transformation are called eigenvectors. Suppose uh, if we have a vector, uh, matrix A that represents a transformation, this transformation, then any vector on the diagonal X would be uh, invariant under the transformation and that would be X. And the only change uh, that would occur to this matrix uh, this vector would be uh, the change in magnitude and change in magnitude can be uh, adjusted by uh, multiplying it with a scalar that is lambda x and this lambda is actually the magnitude uh, of transformed uh, vector and uh, it is also called eigenvalue and the vector which does not change direction under the transformation is called eigenvector okay suppose uh, we want to check uh, whether or not uh, a particular vector is an eigenvector of a given transformation suppose we have a transformation matrix that is 3 0 8 minus 1 and we have a non-zero vector that is x 1 2 and we need to check whether or not it is an eigenvector of this particular direct, uh, transformation i mean we just need to check whether this vector changes uh, changes its direction under this tra this transformation or not so uh, we just calculate ax that is uh, the product of these two matrices and we would have 3 4 and 3 can be taken common from this and then we would have 1 2 and that is actually the same uh, vector which add which we had in the beginning that is x equals to 1 2 so we can easily have a x equals to 3 x so x did not change its direction into uh, a new vector uh, it only changed its uh, direction uh, sorry magnitude uh, and it is now three times longer than the original x but the direction of x remains same so uh, we can easily say that x is an eigenvector of this transformation with an eigenvalue of 3. So the next question arises how do we find uh, an eigenvalue of a matrix uh, uh, a matrix which is given for any particular transformation. Suppose uh, we have uh, for this we have a theorem that is for, uh, theorem 5.1.1 if a is n cross n matrix and uh, lambda then lambda is an eigenvalue of a if and only if it satisfies the equation lambda i minus a equals to zero uh, lambda i minus a determinant equals to zero so how do we get this particular equation 
uh, let me recall the original concept that is we are interested in all those vectors which do not change their direction under a transformation and in, in, in that case we have a x equals to lambda x and I can easily write it lambda x minus a x equals to 0 now if I take x common then I would have lambda i minus a times x equals to 0 because uh, the thing uh, that we are taking common outside is a uh, matrix and here if we do not write i with this then we would be left with a scalar and scalar cannot be added or subtracted with uh, another matrix a that is why we need to place an identity matrix over here because this identity matrix would convert this scalar into a matrix and then their uh, subtraction would be valid otherwise uh, lambda would uh, lambda minus a would not make any sense so now we end up with uh, a system that is a homogeneous system let me call this b then we have bx equals to zero all those systems uh, which are homogeneous have uh, two types of solutions one is trivial solution and another one is arbitrary solution in trivial solution all the values of x are zero and <clears throat> in non-trivial solutions all the values of x are arbitrary constants so to get uh, now we have two cases uh, for b now determinant of b can be zero and determinant of b uh, can not be zero if determinant of b is zero then we would have an inverse of b then it would go on the other side and we would have x equals to zero because uh, in eigenvectors x must not be zero so uh, we are not interested in trivial solutions so that is why b, t b determinant uh, cannot be non-zero so to get a trivial solution uh, non-trivial solution we must have b determinant equal to zero okay so here we have lambda i minus a so to get a non-trivial solution we must have lambda i minus a determinant equal to zero and this is exactly the same which is stated in the theorem <clears throat> so all we have to do is put the value of a uh, in this equation then uh, an identity matrix of the same order as a and then we will just subtract these uh, matrices and then we will take the determinant and eventually we, will, we, will, we would get an equation that is called characteristic equation to explain this uh, process further let me consider an example of a 2 cross 2 matrix suppose this is a matrix and we need to find all the eigenvalues associated to this particular matrix so we just directly use the theorem that is lambda i minus a determinant equals to 0 I just replace the values of uh, i and a in this then I'll multiply the scalar inside and I would have lambda 0 0 lambda and then I'll subtract these values and that would be lambda minus 3 0 minus 0 0 0 minus 8 minus 8 and lambda minus 2 minus plus that would be lambda plus 1 so eventually we would end up with this determinant that is lambda minus 3 0 minus 8 and lambda plus 1 and that is equals to 0 and after opening this determinant we would have an equation like this which would give us the roots that is lambda equals to minus 3 lambda equals to 3 and lambda equals to minus 1 and these la values of lambda lambdas are called uh, eigenvalues of this particular matrix so <clears throat> let's consider a 3 cross 3 example if we have a equals to 4 0 minus 1 0 this and we need to find its eigenvalues then we can directly write this matrix uh, lambda i minus a by just uh, subtracting all the diagonal entries from lambda that is we would have lambda minus 4 <clears throat> lambda minus 3 lambda minus 2 and we would just change the signs of all the other values and we would have lambda minus 4 then 0 then we would have plus 1 and then we would have 0 then lambda minus 3 0 then we would have a minus 1 then 0 and then it would be lambda minus 2 so 
we can directly write lambda i minus a from this matrix and this eventually would help us to skip all these steps of uh, placing identity and then a and then subtracting all these things we can directly write this matrix in this form now all we have to do is open this determinant and after opening this determinant we would get uh, an equation something like this now we can take lambda minus 3 common from this and it would be lambda minus 3 then we would have lambda minus 4 lambda minus 2 equals to plus 1 equals to 0 now uh, either we would have lambda minus 3 equals to 0 or this equation equals to 0 now this would be a quadratic equation which can be solved by quadratic formula or by any other mean and we would get three values of lambda but if we do not take this common then we can just simplify it by multiplying and then we would get uh, an equation that would be of third order and that is written over here that is lambda cube minus 9 lambda square so on now this is a third order poly uh, po uh, equation involving third order polynomial and we can solve it by different means like by remainder theorem then by using long division or synthetic division or we can just simply find the roots of this equation I mean the values of lambda from this equation by using a calculator and uh, let me demonstrate that suppose if I have a calculator uh, this calculator is commonly available in uh, Pakistani markets so it's it should not be hard to get this calculator suppose uh, first of all I would press this button that is mode then I would have this screen with different options then I would press 5 because I want to find equations a solution of equations so I would just press 5 after 5 I would have four options For, first option is a and x plus b and y equals to c n this is actually a linear system involving two variables then second is a system of linear equations involving three variables then third is quadratic equation, equation and fourth is cubic equation and we are actually with the de dealing with a cubic equation so that is why i would press equation for uh, option four and it would give me uh, a matrix something like this and it would ask me to uh, just put the values of coefficients of lambda power three then lambda power two lambda power one and lambda power zero so here the coefficient of lambda power 3 is 1 so I would just press 1 and then equal it would store the value of a then b is actually the coefficient of lambda square that is minus 9 so I would just press minus 9 and equal it would store the value of b then coefficient of lambda that is 27 so I would just write 27 and equal and lastly I would just write minus 27 and equal so i have stored all the values of coefficients now upon pressing the equal i would get the solution x equals to three because that is a cubic equation so i would have three roots so i would press equal three times so it, it, it gives me x equals to three then x equals to th if it gives you a single value it means that it is a repeated root and we would have lambda equals to three lambda equals to three and lambda equals to Three. So that was uh, how to solve this equation by using calculator. If you do not have a calculator then things would be uh, a bit tough for you. Then uh, by remainder theorem we can check different values by plugging in uh, plugging those values uh, inside this equation uh, to get this satisfied. Suppose if we put lambda equals to 1 then we would have minus 8 which is not equal to 1 so lambda equals to 1 is not the root of this equation if you put lambda equals to 2 then again we would get minus 1 this is the remainder theorem that this particular value which we have put over here that is lambda equals to is not the root of this equation uh, next we put lambda equals to 3 so lambda equals to 3 would give us uh, 0 which is equal to right hand side so lambda equals to 3 satisfies this equation so one of the roots is 3 and to find the other roots uh, we can uh, uh, take factor from this that is lambda equals to 3 if lambda equals to 3 is the root 
then lambda minus 3 would be a factor and we can perform long division uh, by using lambda minus 3 and dividing the original polynomial by lambda minus 3 we would we would get lambda square minus 6 lambda plus 9 and after factorizing this uh, we we would get something like this and that is actually the same equation that we would have got uh, we would we would have gotten after taking lambda minus 3 common and in this case uh, we have lambda equals to 3 and after factorizing this equation we would have uh, by factorization or by quadratic formula we would have lambda equals to 3 so we have lambda equals to 3 then we have lambda equals to 3 then we have another lambda equals to 3 so all the roots are 3 so lambda 1 is 3 lambda 2 is 3 lambda uh, lambda 3 is 3 so these are called repeated roots that is why uh, that is how we calculate uh, eigenvalues of uh, different uh, uh, matrices and uh, the term which I have used is characteristics polynomial over there. Uh, whenever we see, uh, when, whenever we uh, find the value of lambda i minus a, we end up uh, on, an, uh, on an equation that would have uh, a polynomial of degree n on left hand side and 0 on the other side. And this, uh, the degree of this polynomial would tell us about the number of roots that we should expect. And the left hand side uh, only would be called characteristics polynomial and the whole equation would be called characteristic equation okay so for this matrix uh, by following the previous procedure we would have uh, equation lambda q minus lambda square plus 27 lambda minus 27 equal to 0 so the polynomial of lambda is just lambda q minus line lambda square plus 27 lambda minus 27 Okay, uh, in this fashion we can find characteristics polynomial and eigenvalues of a particular vector. In next video, inshallah, I will discuss about the eigenvectors. Okay, so uh, till then, Allah Hafiz.